on the Tuesday show. Season four. Let's have the what's your favourite jingle. This is heart. This is time tunnel. Time tunnel. Da, da, da. Oh, oh, don't lean on it, Chris. Oh, don't lean on it, Chris. Yo, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. You son of a bitch. Dragon's tank. Dragon's tank. It's not a bib, it's a tray. Welcome to the Tuesday show with CJ and Ted. <laughs> Well, I think we probably should say we're back for Series 4 of the Tuesday Show. Season 4. Series 4. Season 4. Season 4. <laughs> Series 4, everybody. <laughs> um, so. Uh, those those long-time uh, listeners will understand that, that in-joke. New season, new format. New season, new format. Um, new... New, not us. Not no, not us. We're we're the same. Yep. Uh, if not worse than ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the same level of preparation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, same <laughs> level of uh, show notes, yep. diligence. Same level of professionalism, work ethic, <laughs> yeah. and everything that goes with that. <laughs> um. But yes, it's. Um, I tell you what, I had a question for you. Go ahead, CJ. Uh, um, and my question is, what's your favourite? And before I before I carry on, mm. let's have the what's your favourite jingle. What's your favourite? Did you like that? I love that. That's excellent. Good All work. Right. Good work. Everyone. Maybe, maybe <laughs> actually, you. our first "What's your favourite?" should have been "What's your favourite jingle?" What's my favourite jingle? Yeah, just as an aside, what would your favourite jingle be? Are we talking just about this show, or I, any kind of jingle you like? Any kind of jingle I like. Um, I quite like the uh, the station ID for Heart Radio. Actually, um, oh, yeah. Don't ask me why. I just because it's so upbeat and cheerful, it just makes me smile every time. Mm -hmm. And they go like, "This is hard." This it makes me uh, makes me smile. Yeah. Or the other one, actually, to be a bit more specific on that, they I don't know if they still do it, but they used to do a feature called Time Tunnel, um, where it was this like, "This is Time Tunnel." Well, that was well, they used to do. Um, it's a bit like a, a time capsule type thing. So they have a, an object from decades ago or something, and they'd have people phone in to describe this thing and they have to guess or whatever. Um, yeah. And the jingle for that was always really quite good. And he used to go, uh, time tunnel, da, 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 this is hard. And, uh, Whenever I drive to Newcastle, like in an old job, I, I used to go to Newcastle quite a lot, and you'd end up going through the Tyne Tunnel, and it always just reminded yeah. me of that jingle. And I'd always sing uh, it to myself as I'm going through the the Tyne Tunnel, but I'd obviously change the word time for Tyne, and cause excellent because I'm sad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, <laughs> CJ, back back to what your favourite is. Mm. What is your favourite animated cat? My favourite animated cat. Um, well, I guess it would. I don't know it'd just have to be Garfield, wouldn't it? I mean, there's a few different. There's, I guess, there's a few to choose from, but Garfield, I think, just wins it outright. Garfield's amazing. What? He loves lasagna. He sleeps all the time. Hates Mondays. Mm. He yeah. he is me, or I am him. Yeah. I yeah. am one in Garfield, and Garfield is one in me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But what about? And he's ginger as well. So, come on. You, you say that, but I mean, I I like. I like lasagna. I'm not a cat. Um, Bob Geldof hates Mondays. <laughs> he certainly doesn't like them. All right. Um, also, the, don't forget Top Cat. Now, if Top Cat is in the race, well, he's Top Cat. I could call myself the king of, you know, Azerbaijan. It doesn't make it true. Listen, Your Majesty. <laughs> let's just get back to let's get back to what we're talking about. It's down to cats. Uh, top cat is a top cat. Mm -hmm. um, who else could you? Have? Henry's cat. Henry's cat. Have we spoken yeah. about Henry's cat before? Uh, we might have done, yes. But I don't remember any of the conversations, so I don't remember who Henry's cat is. Okay, yeah, he's a bit, he's a bit old. Yeah, uh, Henry's cat, top cat, Garfield. Um, I quite like Simon's cat on YouTube. Oh yeah, Simon's cat. Yeah. Um, cat. 
Um, the Aristocats. The Aristocats. Um, cat. Thomas um, O'Malley. I know more cats than this. Animated cats. I don't know. I don't think there's that many, really. Not that um, I can think of. Viewers and listeners, if you can think of a an animated cat, who's your favourite animated cat? Get in touch. Put your cats in the comments. Yeah, answers on a postcard in the comments. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but what is your, actually your favourite animated cat, Ted? Uh, probably Henry's cat. Henry's cat, okay. No, I, I know I've mentioned it before because I remember doing the impression. Um, and he, he sounds like this. He sounds, oh, oh, don't lean on it, Chris. <laughs> we finished it. What's the time? Oh, meal time, I would say. Oh, don't lean on it, Chris. Oh, oh, now look what you've done. We'll have to start again. <laughs> and his, fr his friend is Chris Rabbit. Right, okay. And you go, oh, Chris Rabbit. And i tell you what, he's, he's another cat that is a, a cat after her own hearts. Uh, because he likes he likes sleep. He likes f food. Mm. He likes he likes all sorts of weird mixtures of food. I mean, I don't know many cats yeah. that. I've, well, I don't know many cats, but the cats that I I have, you know, known or whatever. <laughs> um, cats that I've known. Yeah. that's another feature. <laughs> so there we go. Cats, cats that I've I've known. known. Um, but the one, the, yeah, the, the the cats that I have known of or known are generally, you know, they all like food in varying yeah. forms. They all like to sleep. Um, mm. Yeah. You know, I don't know if they hate Mondays or not, but mm. yeah, I guess that maybe that's the one unique feature of Garfield is you know he openly hates Mondays, yeah, and antagonizes his owner John Arbuckle. Mm. So uh, yeah, Garfield. Okay, and uh, him, Garfield you, and Henry's you know, cat. You even know John's surname, so that clearly that is your favorite cat, animated cat. Hundred percent. Excellent. What's your favorite? Tell me what's your favourite. Well, that was, what's your favourite? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, actually, I want to talk about. I'll tell, I'll tell you what I want to talk about, Ted. Um, and that is... Uh, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Yo, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Anyway, sorry. Uh, video doorbells. So, like, like doorbell cameras. Um, yeah. I've, I've noticed of late that there are like when whenever I'm having deliveries come to my house or anything like that. So I have a, a video doorbell camera thing, um, and people seem to have an aversion to actually using the video doorbell camera. Um, it's right. like yeah, I'll be I'll be sat upstairs in my office working, and then I'll just hear someone hammering on the door. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell is that noise? And then I'll look at my phone and there'll be a notification from my doorbell camera to tell me that someone's there, but not that they press the button to get my attention. Yeah. It's just that they're, you know, they've detected a person or it's mm. detected a person. And I'm like, why don't you just press the doorbell? So I've taken now. So whenever I open the door to just reminding them, I'm like, there's, there's a doorbell just there. You don't need to, you know, smash the glass in on my front door. Thank you. You know, just press the doorbell. And they all kind of look at me a bit funny. And I'm like, what? You know? You know, some, somebody said to me once, they were like, oh, I don't want my face on, on a camera or something like that. I was like, dude, you walked up to my front door. It's already there. So don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> it's already there. And you can't tell me that you go through life not ever being captured by a video camera. It's just not no, not, not possible. All the time. Yeah, it's just not possible this day and age. Yeah. So just just press the doorbell. And then that, yeah. way you, that way you won't disturb my neighbor by trying to smash the glass in on my front door. Yeah. No. Uh, do you know what? I, I, I don't think this is about, um, uh, what do you call them? Video doorbells mm. or, you know, the ring doorbell. Or uh, I don't think it's that. I think it's just doorbells in general. No, yeah, maybe. Because um, if, if, you're, if you're a delivery driver, you want to get there, do your delivery, move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. You're not messing about. You're not going to visit friends. So the chances are... A lot of houses have got doorbells that don't work. Yeah, problem. Uh, I've got a battery in it's not plugged in. What you know, whatever. Mm. It's switched off for whatever for whatever reason. And I think people are so used to doing this. I mean, I've knocked on doors before, and having pressed the bell, and they say, "Oh, the bell doesn't work." Mm. Well, don't have it then, or put a sign that says the bell doesn't work. 
the, I, like, have you been waiting long? Yes. <laughs> oh, the bell doesn't work. Bell. Yeah. Like a, why, why not put a little note on the door then? Say, sorry, bell does not work. Yeah. Or just yeah. get rid of the bell. Or take it off. Yeah. Get, just get yeah. rid of it. This is when people, when people come to a door and say, yeah, the bell never works. <laughs> we'll take it away then. Well, when I moved into this house, there was a doorbell thing on the outside of the, the front door. Yeah. Um, and I remember, you know, kind of pressing it to test it. Nothing happens. And I'm yeah. like, okay. So unscrewed it from the, you know, took it off the thing to like, right, yeah, it's wired in, screw it back on. Then I could trace the wires back through and see where they come out. And there's a big box just on the inside of my door. Obviously, the the sound of it is. Um, yeah. No batteries in it. Um, and all the contacts are corroded beyond belief. And it's like, well, this thing's never going to work again. So I just ripped mm -hmm. the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll put it back when I move out of this house. <laughs> just like, no, I'll just rip it out. It's, <laughs> it's no good to anybody there. I don't need it. Um, so, yeah, that was that was interesting. But but when I, when I was doing my delivery driving... Um, I'd all if there was a doorbell, I'd always press the doorbell because that's less disturbing to the neighbours if I press the doorbell, and you, I guess they're more likely to hear it throughout the house rather than me just tapping on the glass. Because mm. again, I'm not one of these that goes and knocks really hard on people's doors because I am afraid I'll mm. just end up smashing the glass or something. But but I'd always ring the doorbell. But if I didn't hear anything as I, you know as I press the bell then I'd assume the bell didn't work and then I'd tap on the door at the same time. But if I if I get like a an or you know, I, I can hear the doorbell going as as I press the button, I wouldn't then knock on the door afterwards. I'd rely on the fact that they could hear the bell. I think the problem is if you ring the bell and then you don't hear it, but they do, mm. and then you knock, then you you can imagine the people go, Oh bloody hell I'm, I'm you know yeah. you don't have to tell me twice. Sort of thing. Uh, whereas really... if you go up to the door and go mm. nice and loud once yeah so, and then so you hard that it shakes the camera yeah so hard it shakes the camera <laughs> and, and 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 you do it and you've given them one chance particularly if you're you know delivering parcels if they don't want to come to the door then you throw their parcel in a wheelie bin or whatever they do <laughs> uh, um, and bugger off to the next place. God, could you imagine if I did that when I was do, doing my uh, takeaway driving? It's like yeah, no, no, no one answered the door. Just put it, put it in the wheelie bin. <laughs> Leave a yeah, note. It's, it's, it's in the wheelie bin. <laughs> it's it's a bit different with takeaways because people are there expecting you, aren't they? So yes, um, yes they uh, are. But but yeah, that that that's the problem with doorbells. People assume that um, um, a large proportion of them don't work, and a large proportion of them don't work. I mean, you know, I, I get it, and I I understand kind of the the thought process off the back of that, but still, it's like just try the doorbell first, you know. But especially with video doorbells and Ring in particular, but others do it as well. That they generally give you audible feedback when once you press the button, mm. so you know whether it's working or not. Mm. Um, yeah, the downside to it though. So I had a Tesco's delivery the other day. And the guy had pressed the doorbell, uh, but my phone was on silent and in my pocket in loose fitting trousers. So I neither heard the doorbell nor uh, felt the vibration of my phone in my pocket. So I had no this idea that he was an there. astonishing story. Yeah. That, that you've managed to purchase some loose fitting trousers. You calling me fat, mother? <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Anyway, you don't. You didn't hear it. No, so I didn't hear the doorbell go on. Yeah. So because I don't have like an internal sounder for the doorbell, it just goes straight to my phone or my tablet. But both of mm. which mm. tend to live on silent anyway. So because you know I don't like random noises going off around the place. So yeah, there you go. End of that story. Cool story. It it rings a bell. Really, bruh. Anyway, now it's time for our new uh, feature, Dragon's Tank. Dragon's Tank! Blue Sky Thinking. Innovation. Business. Commerce. Networking. Welcome to Dragon's Tank. Dragon's Tank. Dragon's Tank. <laughs> Dragon's Tank. <laughs> right, on, on this week's Dragon Tank... Um, Dragon's Tank. 
Is it Dragon Tank or Dragon's Tank? Dragon's Tank. Does it belong to the Dragons? It does, yeah. Yeah. So, would you like to describe for the audience what Dragon's Tank is? It's an opportunity for us to uh, showcase some of the, the, the greatest ideas that we've got. And this week on Dragon's Tank, I shall present the, the chest tray. Now, mm. the chest tray came to me whilst I was sat on my sofa watching uh, some trash TV uh, with a, uh, a, a burger and fries from my local takeaway. And I thought to myself, I need something that I can just like hook around my neck, but then be <laughs> able to adjust the angle on so it rests on my chest, but then it sits flat. So yep. no matter what angle I'm sat at, the tray will always be flat, and then I can put my plate on there and shovel food into my face. Mm. So uh, therefore, I give you the chest tray, which will hook over your head as as described, and has an adjustable uh, like leg swivel thing underneath. I think what would probably be good for this is actually if I made like a, a mock up so you could see it and the the, the viewers could see it. Yeah. Um, but I haven't done that, so mainly because right. you know I'm not a builder or carpenter or whatever. Yeah. But I'm imagine an inventor either. No, clearly. Um, so but but imagine, <laughs> imagine a lap tray where it's got the nice beanbag thing on the bottom, so it sits nicely in your lap. Now, for yes. me, I mean, they're um, good. But for yeah. me, because my stomach sticks out so far, I can't really lean over the tray that well. So right. it would be useful if I could have something that sits, you know, hooks around my neck and then kind of just rests itself on my chest whilst I'm sat on, you know, sat down, and I can eat without fear of dropping stuff all over the front of my clothes. So basically, you want your tray, therefore, you want your food as close to your mouth as possible. Yeah. To reduce any kind of spillage or, in fact, delay getting food into your face. Exactly. That's that's the real reason. I just want zero yeah. delay from you know from plate to face. <laughs> yeah, you know, that 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 transition time is crucial. So uh, I've got a question. Go ahead. Um, how would how how would it adjust? I mean, surely you would move around, you know, leaning forward. I'll lean forwards and get myself a, a drink or lean back or lean forwards to get the remote control, whatever it may be. Surely that, that then is going to tip the whole thing. Well, maybe chest tray 2.0 will have like a, a gyroscope in it, which will also level it no matter where you move. I okay. That, that could be quite good. I mean, I know you can buy it. There is like a, a tray system that auto levels itself so no matter what you're doing it's like you could tip it over and you can have i think it's like a drinks holder or something but then it it moves within the tray to keep it level at all times right I can't, like I can't, a gimbal yeah i can't remember what it's what it's called the actual tray itself but yeah it's like a gimbal thing mm -hmm. um so maybe yeah version two could uh could have that included in it as well but for now and it's just a simple tray that hooks around your neck and just you, you have to manually adjust the legs on it so it rests yeah. on your chest and yeah um, in a flat configuration. Mm. Basically, it it sounds a bit like a, a bib, but a bib where you start off with the food inside it rather than <laughs> it falling from your face. It's not a bib; it's a tray. You know, you, you're not you're not just pouring your food into the bib and then eating it out of that. You're putting a plate on a tray that just happens to hook around your neck. Yeah, well, what you could do just to simplify you uh, your your meal times, CJ, is just to get a nose bag, like a horse's nose bag. <laughs> I mean, that could work. Yeah, mind the long face, and that was dad joke of the week. <laughs> dad joke of the week. <laughs> Horse joke of the week. <laughs> uh so yeah there you go that, that's my that's my bad invention for this week okay dragon's tank dragon's tank dragon's tank dragon's tank i don't know why i did that i just it felt right at the time well yeah what she said <laughs> tell you what you never hear about the, uh, these days but I certainly used to hear about it a lot when I was a child uh, is roughage I was never entirely clear what it was never entirely clear to me what roughage is I don't know um, what roughage is yeah I, I think I think it it seemed like roughage was just green 
food. I don't know. Have you got any thoughts on that? I have no thoughts on roughage whatsoever. No. Because <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's meant to be. No, I know. And nobody talks um, about it anymore. Shall we, uh, shall we Google it? Shall we try and find out? I, I, I think we ought to. I think, it, I think it's the right thing to do. Have a look. Fibrous indigestible material in vegetable foodstuffs, which aids the passage of food and waste products through the gut. Oh. Fresh fruit and wholemeal bread are important sources of roughage in the diet. Oh, there you go then. So it's basically yeah, it's yeah nothing. Mm. <laughs> so you know you could call I don't know a bag of coins roughage if you wanted to because you can't digest it. Oh, but then again, it's not particularly fibrous, is it? No. no. It does contain iron? Hey. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't know what coins are made of. What are coins made of? Uh, zinc, I think. Hey. That <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So you and do you know what? I think on, on that rhyming bombshell... It's time to get the hell out of here. Yeah, absolutely. This this needs to end. Yeah, immediately. Bye. That was the Tuesday show. Get in touch with us. All the links are in the description. And until next time, goodbye. Goodbye.